Hello, hello, this is Roguelite Rosso here with another Roguelite Survival game. Um, sounds called Medieval Fantasy Survival Simulator. Um, it's currently on Steam for a quid, or less than two dollars. Um, the reviews on it are really good, so let's uh, let's jump into it. Well, well, well. Look what the storm dragged in. If it isn't another wanderer seeking knowledge and self-reflection, I've seen many of your kind, you know. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Malcius Decimus, soldier, general, instructor, and keeper of the last art of warfare. I like it. I've hunted down evil men across the lands. I've slain beasts with my bare hands. I've toppled kings who sit up high. I've seen hellfire rain from the sky. And as a poet. If you've come to test your mettle, then you've come to the right man. But if you've come looking for trouble, perhaps you should rethink your plan. Something tells me that you're not here for that, though. No. You're here for something else. Something more modest than combat. You're here to test yourself. To see what it ha what it takes to cut... To see if you have what it takes to cut it in a war-torn kingdom. Marching on the battlefield, playing war games and politics, and devising strategies of destruction. You're here to see if, how far you, your spirit can take you. To see if you have the sense to stay alive in a disastrous situation. To see whether your plan leads to gold and riches or certain death. Yes. I can already tell that you aren't like the others who lay beneath our feet. There's something about you that's just different. Mind you, difference does not always mean worthy. Let's find out what may or may not have set you apart for the rest, shall we? I'm going to present you with a series of questions and scenarios. You're going to provide me with the answers, solutions, and plan of action for me. Some of your answers may be wise, some of them not so much. But rest assured, you will be judged accordingly. The most important part of this exam examination is to take your time and answer with complete and utter honesty. Do not rush. Do not falter. Solutions to many of these scenarios may be seem obvious at first, but I urge you to take your time and think about them thoroughly before providing a response. It would be wise to remember those words as we progress. Now, let's get started. We don't have time to kill, only enemies. Many, many enemies. The examination begins. Now. Would you consider yourself to be patient? Yeah, I'm patient. Why not? Would you consider yourself to be fearful? Yeah, sometimes. Do you believe in the existence of a higher power? No. Would you consider yourself to be brave? Yeah, why not? Would you consider yourself to be intelligent? Yes. Would you consider yourself to be charismatic? I mean, like and subscribe. Have you ever entangled in hand to hand combat? I have. Would you say that you hate losing? Yeah. Hate? Strong word? No. Would you consider yourself to be a sore loser? No. Nah. Would you consider you to be a sore winner? Sometimes, maybe. Um, but I'm going to pick myself up. Ah, uh, yeah, not too bad. Would you consider yourself to be physically strong? I mean, uh, let's go, no. Would you consider yourself to be a natural leader? Oh, yes. Is this an interview question? Would you consider yourself to be agile? I'm so agile. Would you consider to be more flexible than the average person? Oh, you should see me. Would you consider common sense to be one of your strong points? Yes, definitely. Yeah. I'm just picking myself up. Would you consider yourself to be open minded? Would you consider yourself to be quick? Witted conversationally. Ah, oh, yes, yes. That's where I do a witty, uh, witty comment, but I can't think of one. Would you could describe yourself to be clever? Isn't that intelligent? I feel like these are just... <laughs> these are all just. Uh... Am I afraid of what others think of me? No, but please don't say anything mean in the comments. Do you have an irrational fear of what you'd consider to be embarrassing? Irrational fears that you'd consider to be embarrassing. Uh, no. 
when you speak more language fluently. Now I'm British, unfortunately. But <laughs> we don't learn other things. Do you ever feel that sometimes you enjoy conflict? Um, no. Do you generally attempt to avoid conflict wherever possible? Yeah. You should all do that. Would you consider yourself to be a free thinker? Yeah. Prideful. Probably a bit, a bit too prideful. Would you consider me judgmental? Uh, I try not to be, I guess. I feel like this is just getting quite personal now. Do you sometimes enjoy eavesdropping on others' conversation? I mean, who doesn't? Come on. Have you ever been betrayed by a friend? Yes. Have you ever been betrayed by a family member? No. Have you ever been betrayed? Have you ever betrayed someone, Lacey? No. Did you ever kill an animal? If I had to. I'm vegetarian, though. Have you ever killed an animal? Like, above ant? Ants are animals, right? I've probably killed lots of ants and flies. <laughs> yeah. 30 days, yeah. I mean, I could sleep 30 days. I could go without water and food for 30 days, no problem. I'm a gamer. Would you consider yourself to be a strategist? Yeah, I play chess. Would you consider yourself to be a warrior? Uh, no. Would you consider yourself to be resourceful? Yeah, sure. Play survival games? Would you consider yourself to be mentally healthy? I'm getting there. You know, lockdown was pretty rough. Would you consider yourself to be well educated? Yes. Do you enjoy playing with fire? I mean, ev everyone loves fire. Have you ever been afraid of the dark? Have you ever been? Yeah. I was a kid. Have you ever been... Had a phobia of spiders? I think I was there, uh, yeah, when I was small. Again. Did a job in security. Uh, yeah, I'll consider it. Would you ever... Uh, would you consider have a time to share? No. Do you follow directions easily? Yeah. Would you consider yourself to be innovative? Sure. Seems very competitive. Oh, yeah. Would you, you consider yourself to be a winner in life? What does that even mean? I mean, I've got pretty good. Has the field of toxicity... The field of toxicology ever intrigued you? No. Do you ever see yourself living, living as a farmer? Yeah, like a high-tech farmer. Would you ever consider yourself... Would you consider yourself to be a gambler? Yeah. Talented in an unusual way. Um, and it's how you define unusual. Probably not. Could you envision yourself enjoying the life of a battlefield surgeon? No, that sounds absolutely horrible. Could you envision yourself the life of an alchemist? Um, I guess so, yeah. You could self-motivated. Yeah. Lack of discipline. God, yeah. Would you consider yourself to be a cautious individual? Uh, not particularly. Perhaps of your loved ones. Yeah. Who is it? Could you see yourself finding happiness if you were the only person left on earth? No. An adventurous lifestyle. Yes. A risk taker. Have I already had that? Reckless at times. I mean, that goes with risk taking, I guess. Do large crowds give you anxiety? No. Do loud noises tend to distract or scare you? Distract or scare you? I mean, there's loud noises. It's quite distracting, isn't it? You consider yourself to be attractive in a traditional sense. I mean, I've been told that I look like some like Edwardian person, so I guess that's traditional. Do you believe that everyone everyone has their vice in the box? Do you happily live the life of a professional thief? No, I don't feel guilty. Are you confident in your ability to Bought off an attacker in a one to one unarmed camp combat. Oh, it depends on the attacker, but let's say yes. 
you work well under pressure. I mean, this I feel like this game's in a lot of pressure. Uh, whether that means that it's a yes or not, I'm not sure. Would you consider yourself to be goal oriented? Everyone should be. Do you work well with others? Yeah. No. I like the authority seems mostly all okay. Do okay. you feel like everyone is created equally? Yeah. I mean, in terms of we are all equal. Yeah. We obviously have our own talents, etc. Have you ever judged someone solely based on their appearance? Uh, probably yes. Um, I hope I don't do that anymore. Do you ever believe that every person deserves a second chance? No, there are some things. If you were in charge of the royal dungeons, would you use torture to extract information from your prisoners? No. Do you see yourself living life as a royal advisor? I mean, I'm British, so the Queen often calls me. Could you ever see yourself living a life as a peasant? Um, yeah, sure. Most people are in medieval times. Would you be willing to assassinate the enemy king in order to save your kingdom? Yes. Would you consider yourself to be a glutton for punishment? No. Does the side of blood make you queasy? No. Does the side of blood excite you? No. Do you think you'd be well suited to manage food and ration usage for a marching army? Uh, I mean, yeah, I reckon I could do it. Could you see yourself enjoy the life of a chef or a baker? Well, I'm a bad cook, so probably not. Could you see yourself being a bandit and stealing from others in order to survive? Uh, do I see myself? I mean, no, I don't think I'd be. Would you consider yourself to be courageous? I mean, I'd like to think I am, but am I? I've done anything courageous. I feel like you have to uh, just show that you're courageous. Would you consider yourself to be wise beyond your years? I'm getting on now. Just wise. Has anyone ever stolen something from you and got away with it? Yeah. Have you ever stolen something from someone else? Not intentionally. I've got my friend's copy of Fable still. I guess that's a yes. I, I, I guess I borrowed that like 15 years ago. Do you ever think the apocalypse is likely to come in your time? Do you think that an apocalypse is likely? I think it's not likely, but it's probably possible. Do you, do you have a fear of the unknown? I guess that's what like... I guess like some amount of fear. If someone hit you for no reason when your first reaction to hit them back, Probably not. We really like to say what the hell, dude. If someone were to, would you wish to seek revenge? I not necessarily. Have you ever truly hated someone? Uh, I, a bit of political time for it. Have you ever felt hated? I guess so. Do you view yourself as a hero at times? No. <laughs> Do you view yourself as a villain at times? No. I'm just this guy, you know? Do you wish to live a life of Richard beyond measure? Yeah, sure. Would you be happy living a very simple, quiet life? I mean, like, really. Are you actively pursuing your dreams in life? Yeah. Do you live a life of many regrets? Probably. Well, that sounds sadder than it is, but I think, you know, you regret things and yeah, that happen. Do you ever forgive yourself? Uh, do, do you know how to forgive yourself in order to progress through the hardest of times? Do I know how to forgive myself? Uh, I guess so. Would you consider yourself to be fortunate compared to others? Yes. Do you think you could live the life of a blacksmith? Yeah, I reckon so. That'd be cool. Oh, well now. That was it. I was not expecting you to answer those questions the way you did. I must say, 
I'm intrigued by your personality and quite eager to pick your brain a bit further before giving my analysis. Those questions were merely the beginning. We've hardly scratched the surface, but believe me, we most certainly will be breaking through soon enough. The next set of questions will challenge your decision-making ability. Some of these questions may be easy to answer. Some of them will prove difficult. To the rational-minded. I urge you to make choices very carefully and think about the potential rewards and consequences of your decisions. Are you ready to begin? A rhetorical question. We'll be starting. No. If you're marching on the battlefield, would you rather have more rations of food or more rations of water? If you're marching on the battlefield, uh, more. If you're in charge of a victorious army fresh on the battlefield, would you choose to take prisoners or execute prisoners? Hey. In order to siege an enemy fortress, would you rather use fire or battering them? Are you going to get into fortress with fire? Would you rather be in charge of stronger troops or smarter troops? I mean, most is strong, right? Would you rather fight against an army of living or the army of dead? Morally, it would be easier to go dead, right? That would be pretty, pretty scary. Would you rather attack by air or by sea? Like air is just pretty superior. Would you rather build your fortress in the snow or build your fortress in the swamp? I was thinking a swamp. Come on. Would you rather rule with an iron fist or a peaceful heart? Ah, uh, I'm a softie. Would you rather lead or follow? Ah, uh, let's go lead. Would you rather befriend the enemy or slay the enemy? Depends on the enemy. I'd rather befriend the enemy. Do you, if your supplies are limited, would you rather feed your army or feed your horses? Army. Would you rather have an army comprised mainly of fast but unarmored units or slow heavily armored units? Um slow. Would you rather be would you rather be an archer or cavalry? That's to ride a horse, but archers are OP man. Would you rather be a spy or an assassin? I don't really think I've got the skills, but that can be cool. Would you rather be a scout or infantry? Infantry. Would you rather bury your dead or eat your dead? Oh my god. Would you rather be cursed with constant drunkness or extreme fatigue? This will be honest. Would you rather be superstitious or overly pragmatic? Over pragmatic. Would you rather be armed with magic or armed with weaponry? I mean, magic. If you're fighting a battle that you couldn't be won and there was no foreseeable escape, would you rather surrender or go down swinging? Would you rather go back in time or forward in time? Back in time. When engaging in combat, would you rather use a sword and a shield, or a two-handed axe? With a shield, please. Would you rather build and lay traps, or organize ambushes? I mean, I guess... Let's put some traps down. To determine who wins in the war, would you rather engage in many skirmishes, or few battles? Let's go for a battle. Would you rather defend your garrison or attack an enemy's garrison? Defense. Would you rather train warriors or train spies? Get warriors. Would you rather invest in livestock or crops? More efficient. 
Oh, I might be biased. Would you rather fight from a distance or engage in close quarter combat? It's a, let's get the archers going. Would you rather pray for a blessing on your troops or curse the enemies? Let's get blessed. Would you rather be incredibly lucky or incredibly intelligent? Uh, definitely lucky rather than intelligent. Would you rather be able to raise someone from the dead once a year or instantly kill someone just by lifting them? Raise someone from the dead once a year? I mean, that. I guess like they come back and they're not like undead, right? Would you rather build or destroy? Let's build. Would you rather have world peace and everyone gets along despite their differences or dominate the world and dictate the people? Well, in most games it's easy to, to dictate, but world peace. Would you rather have the ability to teleport instantly or turn invisible? Teleport. Would you rather forgive or forget? You never forget. Would you rather be a victim or an assailant? Huh. Yes, I think. You'd rather be able to heal yourself or heal others. Heal others. You'd rather trust an enemy or betray a friend. Try and trust an enemy, maybe. Would you rather save a life of an animal? Save the life of a person. Person. Walk barefoot into the snow or barefoot into the desert. Ew. I think I'd rather be barefooted in the desert. It'd be easier to have some kind of layer. You're never gonna get a shoe that's good enough. The snow. I like finding it. If you had to defend yourself using only a dagger, would you rather fight off a lion or fight off a bear? I think a lion. Bears are just like unkillable, like tanks. Would you rather camp for a week in torrential rain or a single day during a snowstorm? A week. Um. I don't know. Let's hunker down. Play Tom. Would you rather kill or be killed? Kill. Would you rather enter a jousting tournament or a sword fighting tournament? I've never ridden a horse. Would you rather enter an archery competition or an axe throwing competition? Don't know how they get axes to. You know when you get them like blade in? Like how do they get it to spin the right amount? The mystery. Gladiator or a soldier? I mean, it's like asking me if you wanted to be enslaved basically. Would you rather rob the rich and give to the needy or keep what you rob for yourself? Oh, let's be Robin Hood. Would you rather be a bandit or a sheriff? Sheriff. Would you rather be a bounty hunter or an assassin? Um, I guess like bounty hunters do it for themselves, assassins have a cause. Would you rather be a town guard or a palace guard? What gets paid more? It'd be easier when I assassinate them to be a palace guard. Would you rather be a tailor or a carpenter? Probably better with wood. Would you rather travel by wagon or travel by ship? Depends if it's on land or not. But we'll go ship. Would you rather live in the forest or live in the Rocky Mountain forest? Would you rather hunt or fish? Um, um, rather scavenge or forage? I'm a bit of a scavenger. Would you rather give or take? Or give. Would you rather too much food or too much water? What does this even mean? Too much food, it's worth more. Give it away. Would you rather have a cook? Would you rather have to cook your food over a fire or purify your own water? Would you rather have, have to cook your food over a fire or purify your own water? Rather purify. I don't like. I don't know if that's like a myth. Only do one or. Do you believe war is more mental or physical? War. Hmm. 
Hmm. I think it's pretty close. Let's go mental. What's more important when training an army? Morale or discipline? Discipline? Would you rather starve your troop as punishment or beat your troops? Yeah, oh, I wouldn't starve people, but beating people isn't very nice either. Would you rather attack during the day or attack during the night? We're, we're stronger, so we'll go during the day. Would you rather defend during the day or defend during the night? Yeah, good point. Would you rather fight to protect your own land or fight to take someone else's land? I'd rather have the moral high ground. Would you rather let yourself go hungry or let your trees go? Yeah. I'll go hungry. Are you more likely to face your fears or find ways to avoid them? Play some. Would you prefer to join a band of adventurers, go on an epic quest, or form your own band of adventurers and lead them on a the quest? I'll join a band. I'm happy to do that. Would you rather become a witch's assistant or hunt an evil witch in the woods? I mean, it's an evil witch, so I'll do it. Would you rather hunt a fire-breathing dragon or fight against an army of ogres? Hunt a fire-breathing dragon or an army of ogres? Um, let's go for the army. Um, I think it's about the time we move on in these kind of questions. I'm a bit baffled, if I'm honest. My early assessment have proven to be accurate. Most certainly are different from those who come before you, you wander out. And one final examination is still for you. This is far more advanced than anything you've asked thus far. I can present you with a series of scenarios and you're going to use the problem solving skills to determine which is the best course of action to take. You'll be presented with four possible choices to solve them the problem at hand. Some of the choices could lead to certain death and it's a failure. Some of the choices will determine how special you may be. Again, I cannot stress this enough. I urge you to make your choices very carefully and think about the potential rewards and consequences for your decisions. Take your time with these. The fate of results lie within the next answers you provide. Alright. It's, it's, it's clutch time. Now. Let us begin and bring this examination to a close. You're tending your fields when you notice an intruder has snuck into your property and is currently loading sacks of wheat into a wagon, blatantly stealing your food supplies. Tending your fields. I'm a kind of a farmer. Snuck into the property. But he's blatantly stealing my food supplies. By the time you catch up to him, he's already jumped on his horse and taken down the road. Your health horse is in the stable nearby, but has fallen ill recently and needs time to recover before you can safely ride it. Your neighbour's horse is nearby and for the taking. You, you and your neighbour are not on good terms. They typically attack intruders on site. What do you do? Okay. Right. So we either jump onto the horse and risk the health, or get out the bandit, take my neighbour's horse without permission and risk the consequences, take time to ask the neighbour if we can borrow his horse, and the reason, or don't chase, let them escape the week. Right. I'm going to go and talk to my neighbour, because if someone's stealing wheat from me, they might be causing them trouble as well, so you might be able to help. You're in the tavern enjoying a meal after a long day of foraging and hunting, when a band of strangely dressed adventurers approach your table. Long day of foraging and hunting. Explain that they've come in search of treasure in a nearby tomb, and they'd like you to join them. 
as you know the area better than they do. In return for your assistance in this quest, they're offering you fourth loot. What do you do? Yeah, let's join him. It's been a hard winter and your funds are low. You've run out of food and drink. You must go to the tavern and acquire acquire some sustenance and fill your belly. You have just a hundred shillings. The last you for the last month of winter. And the price of meal varies from one to another. You begin to to scale the menu before making a decision. What do you do? So, busted potatoes for three shillings. We've got a large leg of lamb for eight. Fudge and meat and vegetable stew, stale bread and some mead. Attempt to steal food. Alright, let's just get the, get the cheap potatoes. We're short of money. We need to buy the cheap food. What's going on? That is good. You and three of your closest friends and family have been taken prisoner. Prison? Pr been taken prisoner for a crime none of you committed. You're all thrown in the wrong dungeons for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. You're not sure what crime you're being convicted of, but, but all of you are sentenced to death by guillotine, guillotine tomorrow at noon. The king has decided to pay you a lot of visit and offer you a deal. No one comes for and blindly admits whatever crime you're being charged for, then just doing execution willingly, then the remaining three will walk three. Three. Alternatively, if one of you is willing to write out the others first, then the person will be awarded freedom for compliance, and the remaining will be executed. What do you do? Sacrifice myself for the loved ones, blame the crime on my loved ones, so I can walk free, stay silent, come to step forward, attempt to fight, knowing the most lead. I mean, we've got to take the hit, haven't we? Family. After living the life of a lonely person, you decide to save enough coin to pay for your entire uh, entry fee into an archery competition. You spend all that you have to enter and miraculously win. Okay. <laughs> the grand prize for winning is archery competition with 100 shillings and the ticket to the royal ball being held at the palace. You own a clothes suitable to even walk through the door, so you stroll down to the toast shop and buy new threads. And when they get there, you quickly realise that 100 shillings barely covers the price of such fine linens, and in no time you're broke again. You're heading to the ball when you're fancy new clothes. Your garb snags on an old tree branch and rips at the, from the bottom, leaving a gaping hole, exposing your bare skin underneath. Not the fun to repair the goes, and if you did, yeah. Very sharp night, yeah. Important decision to make. Look, I'm gonna go in my common clothes, and I shouldn't have bought these nice guys anyway, because I'm a commoner who's won a competition, and that is what I should be presented as. You're driving down the road, returning from the last market of the season, but you've pawned off excess goods to make some coin to last through the winter. You're carrying everything valuable. You're carrying everything valuable that you possess in your wagon, and you hear that anyone travelling in a wagon should take care now. Markets are closed because bandits have been seen ambushing travellers and stealing their final season's earnings. As you travel down along that road home, you see the dis distant broken down wagon on the side of the road and it appears to be missing one of its wheels. You notice the broken wheels completely split in half, laying dirt on the opposite side of the road. Standing next to the wagon is an old lady wearing a tattered leather cloak. You have a spare wheel in the back your car, your wagon, your wagon breaks down. Might be a trap.
tough one, isn't it? Why is there an old lady coming herself in a wagon? We're gonna give the wheel, but not not help her. If you're far from home and you receive word that your dearest sibling is sick and could die at any moment, they could already be dead by the time you receive this letter. I urge to make it home, say your goodbyes. You're urged to make it home, so you say your goodbyes as quickly as possible. You know that there is no cure for what ails them, bring down a quick miserable death it takes hold of. You tell a close friend of yours the news and advise you have a few different options you have for travel. From the sound of the letter, at the time of the you believe the sibling has maybe a day or two left to pull their take as well. Good. Push breathe through the mountains. No one travels that way until the weather's gone down. While the storm's been battering the mountain range several months, none have ventured. You can take the lengthier but relatively safe route. route two full days if you travel through the woods. Then your friend is your third option, purely a rumour. There is an old hag in which on the end of the woods about a half journey in the opposite direction, I have to say the cure for the disease your loved one suffers from. You, you know not of its merit nor cost or downfalls. Well Even if we went for the hag and then went back, we make it in time. And it's an old hag in the woods. She's not going to do anything for us. Um, we take the safe route home. We, we can't. We can't save them. Your king, Lord Rumna, has heard word of your bravery and skill throughout the land. And called upon a very special and very dangerous quest, he wishes for you to retrieve his daughter, Princess Solom, from the kingdom of Ar Arakol. The treacherous and wicked king reigns over Arakol. However, to prevent war between the two kingdoms, which would have certainly ended in your kingdom's demise, Lord Prumnar <laughs> has made a deal with King Re Rexnix of Arakol. Rumnar traded his only daughter, Princess Solom, so that King Rickness may betroth her, but Rumnar has grown displeased and saddened with the decision efforts to save his kingdom. He's willing to reward you handsomely upon the completion. Of your task to retrieve his daughter. With all your skill and guile, you must sneak into Aragon Light, kidnap the princess, and bring her safely home while you're lonesome. On another note, if you're caught, this will surely cause an immediate war between two kingdoms. I mean, that's clearly not what we should do. Okay. I'm just not doing it. You're hunting in the swamplands, gathering food and various animal pelts to sell at market to save the dire times. You gather a wagon full of animals, ready for pr 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 processing. And you're about to head home when you see something glistening, moving in the distance. I can't believe your eyes. A magnificent beast of legendary proportions emerges from the tree line in front of you. It's known as Gimhide Gat. Gazelle. It's known as the Gemhide Gazelle, a deer like creature whose hide is covered from top to bottom in gemstones, gold, silver, and arrows, various met rare metals. The, ge the Gemhide Gazelle, Gemhide, not Gemhide, <laughs> was said to be worshipped in ancient times and protected by the gods themselves. The legends say encountering one of these wild would bring luck and prosperity to a living life on its beautiful form. You've heard stories about folk tales that the creature had, but always dismissed them and considered. Tells mothers would tell their children at bedtime. Here it stands for you, glistening in all its glory. Your wagon is already full with fond possibilities. This encounter could bring to you. My wagon's full. Oh, 
Let's track it. You venture into an, alchem uh, an alchemist shop looking for a potion to help you with genital, <laughs> genital itching. The alchemist informs you that he's all out of gopher root, a key ingredient to the concoction of such a, such a potion. He doesn't know when he'll get any more in stock and doesn't know where to find it as it grows wild in a far off region of lands. However, he informs you that he's just received a set of vials of grape powder and he has only one left to offer. I think you only must be passed over to the alchemist and return such a wonder. You'll receive a potion that when imbibed grants one of three magical powers. The potion will include superhuman strength, unrivaled by any mortal, the ability to breathe underwater indefinitely, and the ability to turn invisible at will. You don't know which of these abilities will be granted until you drink the potion. However, with all things can grow with all of these things come greatly equally consequences. Alchemist like tells you a side effect. Previous four consumers, while they did in fact gain the magnificent power, they suffered horribly and so painful death random, at random intervals upon drinking the potion. The first had no sense of 20 years and lived a great life before dying, the second took three years before falling ill and meeting his demise. The third, still living today, you can call being bedridden with a disease so you turn your body into flesh. Chamber living, but you got a solid 40 years without experiencing any symptoms or ailments. And finally, the fourth consumer is the argument itself, who claims to be on the cusp of a groundbreaking discovery that can reverse the negative effects of the potion before they occur. That being said, he isn't finished with his research and doesn't know how much longer it will be. What do you do? Let's get a superpower. They might go off something else. The siblings come to you, bleeding profusely and missing an arm. Cut off clean its shoulder, their torso, uh, their torso at the shoulder. They claim they have lost their arm in battle and wish to go back to the neighboring village to take their arm off their assailant. And they're asking you for assistance in the matter. Upon further interrogation, you learn that your sibling was attempting to rob the assailant's home and steal from them before being met with resistance. They're planning on leaving in the night, receiving medical care wound. You don't have much time to make the decision. They're dead set on carrying out the plan of vengeance, even if it costs their own health or life. What do you do? Go to village myself and handle matches on my own. Go to go with my sibling to take an arm for an arm. If you my sibling, I said, well, prevent my sibling from going and talk them out of it. I mean, that's ridiculous. You've made a great de deal of very... You've just made a great deal. A very wealthy customer at the market and are travelling home with, with a wagon full of shillings. You've never had more money in your entire life. Your primary focus is getting home quickly and safe safely as possible. As you're traveling down the long dirt road home, you notice a familiar face of a merchant friend of yours, along with the wagon roadside. However, his face is battered and beaten, his garments are ripped and torn, and he he's kneeling in the dirt surrounding surrounded by four bandits with daggers to his throat. He's about to be robbed and executed in cold blood, and whatever decision you need needs to be made quickly. You have weapons of your own in the wagon and feel confident in your ability to take one, maybe even two of the bandits simultaneously. But fighting all four could, could certainly lead to the death of both of you and your friend. What do you do? You drive down the road, get home safely, get out of the wagon, they attempt to fight the bandits. Stop the car. We gotta fight the bandits. We gotta. You're traveling home in the market when you see a group of armed men in the distance as you approach, they block 
the road and flag you down. They approach the wagon and they tell you they are ashamed to admit it. They're not good people in the eyes of the law. They've robbed murder and pillaged to get by, and their numbers are about to be up as the, the and their number is about to be up as the king's guard is coming for them and will catch them in a matter of minutes. They ask you to hide in the wagon just until the guards pass by and assure you they won't be questioned. Seen any mercenaries in these parts lately? If you help them, they promise to guard. They promise to guard you and work for you for the rest of your life. They vowed to honor their agreement in their mercenary code to do so. However, if, if somehow get caught, they'll know that you've been, you'll be elected along with them. We're not getting involved. Let's just go home. They're mildly drunk and sitting in the fireplace in a tavern, enjoying a good tunes and are like the audience until you hear the loud, a large sudden thud. The tavern door swings open hard and reveals a wooden wall and it shakes the entire building. The silent fills the ears. You turn your head in wonder in the doorway stands a tall, cloaked figure staring directly at you. You notice that everything in the tavern has come to a halt. The music has stopped playing, the people have stopped moving. And even the fire stopped flickering as if time itself frozen. If you look back at the still figure before, he begins to walk towards you. He sits down in the seat next to the fire directly across from you and gazes upon you incursively. Before saying a word, he pulls from his cloak three objects that radiate with such energy that it sent shivers down your spine. He pulls a small wooden ta- pulls up a small wooden table, drapes an ancient looking tapestry over it, and lays objects upon it. In a gross, rusty voice, the figure begins to speak in a language you've never heard, but for some reason you can understand it fluently. He tells you that he's come to offer you a chance to turn your port- fortune and life around in your life, but you must gamble with fortune itself. The first item presented is a dead man's coin, the second item is blackened rabbit's fur, and the third item is a tiny little fairy floating, glimmering inside a glass jar. The figure explains that one of these three items is cursed, while the other two will bring you an incredible fortune. He tells you to make your choice before going silent. Listen, you rescue your wife and the town's black sis from the disastrous fall as her wagon rolls off the cliff. You happen to be in the right place at the right time and manage to pull her from her demise safely and securely. Once the blacksmith heard of your heroic deeds, he wishes to repay you by crafting a magical sword of your choosing from various rare metals you've acquired over time, the blacksmith will. Embed the hilt of the sword with a jewel, granting the power of the sword itself and its bearer. You may choose the Emerald of Luck, which will bring great fortune, a ruby of power, which will bring great strength, and sapphire in- that will give you great intellect. Or a topaz, quickness will grant you incredible speed and agility. What do you do? Emerald of Luck. This concludes the examination. Oh! Thank goodness. You made some very interesting choices, Wanderer. After questioning you thoroughly and assessing your skills, I've come to the final conclusion that your chances of surviving these lands. Firstly, I'd like to say it's been an honour to assess you. Very few have ever made it as far as you have, and even fewer have resulted have results such as yours. I wonder if that's true. I'd be interested to see if you guys uh, play this, if you get um, similar similar kind of right results, or if you do actually have a chance of dying. <laughs> Let's just get right down to it, shall we? I, Malcius Decimus, have determined that the chances of surviving in treacherous and foreboding lands, such as these, is approximately. Yes, just as I thought. 77.5% chance of survival, basically, decision making abilities, quick thinking, and wit. I'll take a. you know. These are hard lands. 
always a potential disaster here with some of the risks you take. However, you've scored much higher than the vast majority have come before you. Oh, baby. Well done, Wanderer. Truly, you should be quite proud of yourself. Having you is no easy task, and it's certainly not for the weak hearted. Before we end our examination, I'd like to give you something. A little parting gifts, if you will. I'm going to give you a word and urge you to remember it clearly. Write it down if you need to, for it will benefit you greatly if you choose to use it properly. My secret word is blessed. Hashtag blessed. Get that word close and readily available for a while. Not great things for you in the future. If you're brave enough to venture forth and use it. Hashtag blessed. But well, wonder until we meet again. Stay safe and stay bloody. <laughs> Your results are based on many different variables and may vary with each playthrough depending on the multitude of factors. I hope you enjoyed the experience and learned a little bit more about how your brain works when presented with different survival situations, conflicts, and obligations. Take the secret word that you were assigned at the end of your session and leave it in the comments for us. We will be selecting some of the some of you based on your answers and included in future projects. Currently working on Chasing Demon, which you can find on Steam. We'll also be taking your name from the comments and placing it in the credits of our upcoming RPG title as a thank you for participation and support. We really truly appreciate you and look forward to reading through your words and thoughts. If you left a secret word on other titles, we've read your feedback and it's helped us construct this project, as well as other titles we're currently developing. We will always read every comment we get, you will not go unnoticed. If you'd like to support us by paying our other projects, leave your secret word with us and greatly appreciate it. Again, thank you so much, bottom of the hearts. So that's a lovely word from the developers there. So this game costs absolutely nothing at the moment. It's a, it's a cool uh, little game. Um, and um, yeah, you, you guys should uh, check it out. Um, you know, put in put in a quid and uh, and give a run through yourself. If you do have a run through, I'd be curious to have your, uh, your special words as well, as well as your percentages, if you put those in the comments. That would be awesome. Alright guys, I will catch you later for this one. This has been Roguelike Ro Rosa. Thanks again for listening. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Alright, catch you later. Bye!